So, you are looking to do things like this to a Knight's Cavalry. And you are also looking to absolutely destroy even dragons that fly away from you. Those are the exact reasons we are going to be taking a look at the continuation of my Mog's Spear Arcane Bleed build. So, welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at Mogwin's Sacred Spear and the continuation of the previous build I put together for it. I've changed a few things round. I've included something new into the build. So taking a look at the spear itself, I've built it up to a plus 9, it's leveled up through some of the smithing stones, it scales on strength, arcane and dexterity, it causes blood loss build up, you will need 24 strength, 27 arcane and 14 dex to run this. You can see all of my stats on the right hand side of the screen. And just quickly before we get any further into the build, if you are not currently sub to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get back to it. So the new addition or one of is the Dragon Communion Sill. I built this up to a plus nine. And if you look at the arcane scaling, it scales at an S tier when you do have it at this level or even plus 10. So you will see with this that the incantation scaling is 296. That's what you're going for through arcane. You'll see my arcane stat is at 45. Because otherwise this seal makes no difference. It boosts dragon communion incantations. But the incantation scaling in general is what you're going to be looking at. So in order to get your hands on the dragon communion seal. With the Mog Spear, I did cover it in the previous video, but if you make your way to Mog's Dynasty, which can be done either quite late into the game, or by completing the White-Faced Vare quest, then when you do get here, make your way up to the boss, take down Mog, then take his Remembrance through to the Round Table Hold, and you can claim the Spear there. But with the Dragon Communion Seal, it's actually obtained in the Stranded Graveyard. So what you want to do when you get to the Stranded Graveyard, it's right at the beginning of the game, before you even make it into Limgrave. You need two Stone Sword Keys to access this Imp Statue, and then you're going to jump down here, and you're just going to run all the way along. I'm going to try and make this as brief as possible. There's going to be chariots, so run and find your first Entrance safe from the chariot. Then when it comes up, because we're still quite high up, we're going to wait for it to go back down. We're going to run down with it. And we're going to stand in this one here. You're going to get attacked, but when it goes up, you're going to come down to the third archway on the right. You're going to deal with that guy, you're going to have one spawn in behind you as well, so kill both of those, and drop down. When you drop down, I'm pretty sure there is another chariot. But I don't think it comes up here, I think it's at the bottom. So if you run down, you're going to stand in here, deal with that guy. And just keep running. I'm pretty sure we have to get in here. This is the only thing I'm not 100% sure about. Where is that chariot? Ah, oh, there we go. So we're going to follow the chariot. We shouldn't have followed the chariot. So when you do come around that corner, hide in that archway. Okay, for some reason, the chariot has ended up going a different route. So after it goes past you, make sure you run. 
And when you get to the top, there's going to be an enemy through here. So I'm going to defeat this enemy quickly. And the first time you defeat the enemy, he is going to drop the Dragon Communion Seal. Again, using Somber Smithing Stones, you can level it up. As I said, I've got mine up to plus 9, it's got 296 incantation scaling. It scales with Arcane at an S grade. The two incantations you do want to run, number one is Swarm of Flies. When you are in Mog's Dynasty, or that area, and you've made your way to Palace Approach Ledge Road, from here, if you stick to the right-hand side and make your way down the hill where everyone does the rune farms, you come into the like River of Blood, in, I believe it's the furthest cave on the right-hand side, you'll see a couple of caves along this wall. Inside, I believe it is the furthest one, you will find yourself a swarm of flies. It's going to be found on a corpse, so you should be able to avoid all combat. For the second incantation, we're going to be looking at Golden Vow. And if you make your way up to the capital outskirts and you come all the way round, so you go inside, you follow it all the way round, go past the Windmill Village, follow it all the way, you are going to come to Bridge of Iniquity. From there, you follow the path all the way along until you get to Corpse Stench Shack. If I remember correctly, you are invaded by an NPC at this point. So kill the NPC inside the shack, you will find Golden Vow. So you've got the spear, you've got the uh, communion seal, or the dragon communion seal. You've got swarm of flies, you've got Golden Vow. At this stage, you have two choices. You can either run the white mask, which I am actually locked out of on this character, because if you've killed Mog, you can't obtain the white mask. But you can run it, it's going to stack with one of the talismans we're running. I've also recently done a video on the channel for that as well. Or you can run the Silver Tear Mask. This is going to boost your Arcane by 8. And in order to get your hands on the Silver Tear Mask, what you need to do is go and kill Radan, one of the like main story bosses, and you are going to unlock Nokron Eternal City, as you make progress through there, you're going to come to a Mimic Tier boss. Once you do take down the Mimic Tier boss, you will be awarded with the Silver Tier Mask. When it comes to the rest of the armor, it's completely personal preference. I am running the Black Knife armor set, and the reason I am doing that is you make absolutely no sound whilst you're moving around, so enemies do not detect you anywhere near as easy. Getting this armor set is incredibly easy. I've got a full assassin build on the channel as well. But when you do make your way, like I say it's easy. It's easy to get your hands on. You don't need any combat, but it does require a lot of progression. When you make it up to the Consecrated Snowfield, come to Ordina. And from Ordina, when you get to the back end of it, you'll see this massive staircase. If you drop down on the right hand side underneath in like the first archway you'll be able to find a dead black knife assassin and you just take the armor set off their body then when it comes to the talismans with the flask of wondrous physic it's completely personal preference i don't have any that are really going to optimize the build but with radagon sawsil the first talisman this one is going to raise four of your attributes by five those four attributes will be Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity. Radagon Sawsil, if you make your way to Kaelid, is going to be located up at Fort Faroth. So make your way through the fort, pick yourself up that talisman. Then you do have a choice with this one. However, you're either going to find the Faithful's Canvas Talisman, or you can get the upgraded one, which is going to require a full-on NPC quest. So the Faithful's Canvas Talisman, when you make it to Celia Crystal Tunnel, which is right over here in Kaelid, in order to get here from the first step, you actually need to... So over here is the first step. You need to head east over to Dragonburnt Ruins. There's going to be a chest down some stairs in like the main section of the ruins. It's going to be a trap chest and it will actually teleport you over to the crystal tunnel and when you are in there there's going to be like do your exploration and stuff there's going to be a corpse that's guarded by two of the prawn miners 
and when you take those down or like lure them away from the corpse you go in you grab your loot you'll find the faithful's canvas talisman if you do want the upgrade because what this is going to do is raise the potency of your incantations with the phlox canvas it will greatly raise the potency so it's an upgrade on this one however it will drop from gallery after you've completed the millicent quest line and you kill gallery or well, basically you complete millicent's quest line you defeat her in battle then you return to gallery he's going to be dead and the talisman will be on his corpse you will also get his bell bearing to take to the twin maiden husks in the round table hold then the third one is Marika's saw seal and this one is a little bit irritating to get your hands on and it's going to require a lot of progression because you're going to need to go up to the halig tree when you make it to the prayer room what you are going to do from here is run out northeast you're going to ignore the enemies but you're going to jump over here to the right hand side and then drop down onto this roof and at this point you will see an Erd tree avatar what you need to do is wait for him to walk all the way along so i'm going to drop down now if we go north and we come across to here drop onto this tower come around to the back of it and then you're looking for that little ledge so jump across and then run along towards the uh, tree avatar but then jump down onto this tower here there's going to be some freaky enemies around here but in that room at the end you'll need stone sword keys to get in there so level with my mask you'll see the little imp statue on the left hand side of the archway use your stone sword keys go in there there's a chest at the back you'll get marika's saw seal and what that's going to do alongside radagon's saw seal is increase the amount of damage you're going to take so i mean if you're not wanting damage if your stats are high enough without these then I do recommend leaving them behind because you're going to take a lot more damage. I believe it's around 13% for Radagons and it's 15% for Marikas. So you're taking about 28% damage more. However, with Marikas Sorcil, it's going to increase your Mind, Intelligence, Faith and Arcane by plus 5 each. So that is going to help with this build a lot based on it increasing your Arcane. However, as I said, you're taking an extra 15% damage, so it is risky. And then the final piece of the build, Lord of Blood's Exaltation. If you do have the White Mask, you can stack it with the effect of this talisman. Blood loss in the vicinity will increase your attack power. This comes in so handy when it comes to a blood loss build. And in order to get your hands on it, if you make your way to the capital... What you want to do is head down into the Lendel Catacombs, figure out the puzzle in there, open up the boss room, take down the boss, and you'll be awarded with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman. Then that is the entire build put together. At this point, if you followed it, you should have Mog's Sacred Spear, you should have the Dragon Communion Seal, Silver Tear Mask or White Mask, then whatever armor set you've decided to run, Radagon's and Marika's Saw Seal, Faithful's Canvas Talisman, or the upgraded one, Flox Canvas, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, and then a Flask of Wondrous Physic of your choice. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, it's incredibly powerful. With the Spear, if you use your left trigger, you're going to do the Blood Boon Ritual, which if I show you against these enemies, so if we drop down here, I'm going to get this guy's attention. You can not just press it once, but if you press it three times... The last one's the longest as well. That's all going to induce blood loss buildup. But not only that, it procs the ritual. Ow. It procs the ritual onto your weapon. So this, the entire time, is going to build up blood loss as well. Then what you're using Swarm of Flies for is to also induce the extra blood loss buildup. And alongside that with Golden Vow, that is going to increase your attack power. You'll see there it's very strong just as a weapon. 1482 I got on a backstab. So Golden Vow as a spell is going to cost you 50 stamina, but it will grant a 15% damage increase, and you get a 10% damage reduction on all sources, and it lasts for 90 seconds. 
Also, if you want to run Flame Grant Me Strength, that's going to give you an approximate 20% damage bonus to your physical, fire, and mixed physical and fire attacks. And it also gives you an approximate 15% damage bonus to any other type of attack. It will last 30 seconds, but Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength do stack multiplicatively. If you do want to get your hands on Flame Grant Me Strength, I might actually chuck it into my build quickly. If you come to Kaelid and you come to Fort Gale North, you're going to make your way to the fort and round the back there's going to be a couple of flamethrower turret things. In between them on a corpse you'll be able to find Flame Grant Me Strength. So if we do a test, this guy that charges with the sword, I got 507 from a standard physical attack. It was 507, then with the same guy, wherever he is, here he is, it was 507, goes up to 583, and I'm going to guess that it's still procced, even when you rest at a site of grace, but if you pair it with flame grant me strength, it goes from a 583 up to a 698. So what I'm going to do, we took down a dragon and the knight's cavalry at the start of the video. What we're going to do for the final showcase is take down this earth tree avatar. He's already looking at me. You'll also see that he can still wreck you. Realistically, with this guy, what you want to do is try and get that third tick in with the spear. Or the third proc, because it's going to help you out so much. So if I get him with the flies. You'll see that tick. I did half his health in one go. And there you go. A little bit of patience and perseverance. I mean, you saw the uh, the very first bit of damage we dealt. It was over 7,000 damage. Because the more it procs, so like your first one is going to be okay damage. Your second stab into the air is going to be bigger. And your third one, which lasts the longest, is going to ruin enemies. Like completely destroy them. Also, if you take down that uh, tree avatar... You uh, get yourself a nice somber ancient dragon smithing stone to uh, take a weapon or anything up to level 10. So our gate front, we always do little tests down here, providing I don't get hit. Right now, give me a second, you lot. I said give me a second. I'd appreciate being able to actually pull this off. I mean, I didn't even get to use the second and the third one. It took one, and with Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow, they, uh... Every single last one of them <laughs> dropped around me. And, uh, yeah, because your arcane's high, your discovery goes up, so your luck stat goes up, and you get lovely loot drops. So that was a look at a fantastic and incredible, a broken and overpowered arcane bleed build in Elden Ring. As I showed at the beginning of the video, you can even take down dragons. It's not going to be a one-shot. I mean, it was with the Knight's Cavalry, and I mean, I took over half of the health of that Erdtree Avatar away with one proc of the third Stabby Stabby into the air. But you can even take down the Agile bosses. As long as you get, like, a couple of seconds with them, you can deal insane amounts of damage. And there's just always more and more to proc with the build. And as I said, I can't use the white mask, but that does stack for blood loss build-up stuff with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman. So that could be an even better choice than the Silver Tear Mask, if you have that option. Remember, if you do kill Mog first, you can't get the white mask. But there are other videos to lead up to this one on the channel already. We do have the Arcane Bleed build for Mog's Spear, like the original version of it. And we also have a full-on location guide for the white mask as well. But what we're going to do on that note is leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.